my name is Inga Hanover. Uh, this is my mum, Beata, lame daughter Millers. I grew up here in Beechworth with my sister, my mum and dad and my grandparents. I came from Germany because we're living in Germany five years. And there, you know, communism coming, you know, taking part from Germany. And uh, we just, you know, oh. After um, they escaped from Latvia, they lived for about five years in a variety of displaced persons camps in Germany and then along with many other of the um, Baltic refugees, they came to Australia um, and first of all landed in Port Melbourne and then from Port Melbourne came up to Bonagilla. It's strange. All, you know, climate is different. All nature is different. And people not like it us. <laughs> I, I think for a lot of these families it would have been, and especially for the women, I think it was really, really hard. Um, you know, just to be in a really strange country, new customs. And I, I, I think that, you know, often the customs were really misunderstood. You know, I think the locals, I think, here were really compassionate and really friendly and I and I don't know whether it had something to do with you know having an asylum here that people were just used to things that were a little bit different. Whilst it was really hard for mum and I think Beechworth was a good place for a lot of these people. We have you know two-year contract where the government put us to work. I landed to mental hospital and my dad to a tenery. and my mum it's not working she not have contract basically came you know maybe 17 or 18 families here latvians but it's other, other people too you know ukrainians but um, after that two-year contract you know everybody's went to melbourne or sydney looking for a better job. Why we stayed here? Because my dad, he loved to drink. And that time what he drinking, he coming, he going to one place, to other place. And mum said that to me, she said, better we stay at here, we know where he goes in small places. <laughs> We said, if we're going to Melbourne or Sydney, we said, we can look after him. And that's why we stay at here. That is that reason. <laughs> can I keep track of, keep track of him? The Latvians are famous drinkers. <laughs> yeah, I have two daughters then. My parents passed away and my husband and they, I am here alone. It's too big for me. I have chooks, I have a cat. <laughs> you have your garden? Yeah, I have my garden. We try and, or I try and actually um, cook as much Latvian food still as I can. Look, mum has actually, like all of the preserving, she's taught me. That's pumpkin, that's tomatoes. And there it's cucumbers, that it's mushrooms, and there it's apple jam. Yes, it's rounding, it's very nice, I lo like it, but I like it better in my own country. Yeah, in her heart and soul, I guess, you know, physically my mum is very active here and, you know, really loves it, but I guess her heart and soul is in Latvia.
I am Martha Nicklaus and I arrived in Australia just before my eighth birthday and I have lived in Beechworth nearly all of my life. We came to Stanley first actually. Our father got a job in the orchard and then when, he, when the, uh, the, the owner died, he moved to the tannery in Beechworth and that's how we came to Beechworth because Stanley's only six miles away. The streets are pretty much the same. The shops are still the same. It hasn't changed all that much. Oh, pretty good, apart from some people who called you a bloody bolt or something like that. It was pretty good. They accepted you and liked you. And the fact that I was good at sport, you know, basketball and tennis and what have you, they just accepted me as I was. In fact, I was better at it than most of them. <laughs> oh, yes, I had never had a beautiful doll because in the refugee camp, you just didn't have one. And mum was going to buy me a doll, a beautiful one. There was one in the shop here in the local newsagent and she went to go and get it. She came home and said, I'm very sorry. It's more than father's week's pay, he said. She said, I cannot buy it for you. And that was it. I never did get that beautiful doll. Three brothers and me. Um, yes, um, brothers were very intelligent. They all went to university. Mum told me women are no good for anything else except whiting babies' bums. Don't think you're going to uni. Well, my brother found my report book. I don't know where he found it, but he had a look and he said, but you got me better marks than I did. He said, why weren't you in uni? Well, that had been squatched by my mother quite some time ago, so I never went anywhere except to office work. I worked for a carrier in Wangaratta for about seven years. Then I worked for a solicitor. And then, where did I work? Oh, I did everything after that. Uh, later on, when I just wanted to pick extra money, I cooked dinners for some people. I cleaned house for some people. I did gardening for some people. So I did what I could do. And the extra money came in very handy. I have taught a, a lot of my Latvian traditions to my family. My sons and my grandsons all now know how to smoke bacon. They know how to make potted meat. I've, I've taught them all that. Easter was fun, you see, we used to have eggs, but ordinary eggs. Who could afford chocolate eggs in Latvia? You couldn't. Now, if you have an egg that is stronger than anybody else's, if you break the egg, that egg is yours. You go and try again with another friend. If you break his egg, that egg is yours too. Then finally, when yours gets broken, well, you lose your good egg. <laughs> now, I had had such a wonderful time in this lovely country of Australia that I felt that I should be giving a little bit of myself back to the country. So one day I walked into the Salvation Army store and said to the captain there, do you need help? He said, I do, start on Monday. And I've been there for 25 years. Monday morning, I arrive at quarter to nine and finish at 11.30. And I've done this for 25 years. <laughs> then she bosses me. <laughs> bosses a lot. <laughs> mum do that, mum do that, mum go there. Oh, I'm just trying to, you know, so give you a social life, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I'm really proud for her, um, you know, courage and resilience. It's, I, I don't think it's that easy to, you know, drop one life and just be sort of transported to a new place. And um, in her really sort of quiet little way, I, I think that she's um, really looked after the land and the earth. Um, and she's really, I'm really proud of the fact that she's so self-sufficient, you know, in these times of, you know, sort of climate change, you know, to, to still at 87 to be able to do all the things that she does. 86. Oh. <laughs> I just love the place. It is lovely. 
It's reasonably quiet, apart, like I said, apart from the tourists. We're getting too many. And then it's very difficult to get a parking place in town, which we don't like anyway, yes. <laughs> but apart from that, Beechworth is lovely, the hills and the trees and the birds, and it is very, very nice.